Hi, it's Connecticut car accident attorney Ryan McKean here. And today I'm going to talk to you about a situation that I see a lot where progressive insurance company, the insurance company for the person who hit you, the person who caused the accident through no fault of your own, drags their feet and doesn't pay for a rental car, doesn't pay to fix your car. And, and what they tell you is that they have to investigate the claim. So I've made this video to help you fight back against progressive insurance. Insurance companies in any single case have one strategy, and that is delay, deny, defend. And that often starts for many of our clients and many people who are in car accidents in Connecticut when they are in an accident and the insurance company won't pay for a rental car, they won't pay uh, to get the car fixed. And for so many people, working people, this presents a massive amount of pain and challenge that is intentionally inflicted upon the insurance company. And now I'm not talking about accidents where, well, there could be some question as who's at fault. I'm talking about rear end car accidents. I'm talking about accidents that couldn't have happened any other way. And what these insurance companies do is they say, well, we have to investigate the claim. We have to investigate what happened. And under the law, that's correct. They do have to investigate. But insurance companies, if you give them an inch, boy, they take a mile. And so what they do is they delay their investigation and they point to some very common reasons. Um, the first reason that they often say is, well, we need to wait for a police report. And come on, this isn't a case where somebody was stopped and it's a rear end collision. Um, there's no need to wait for a police report to tell us how that happened. So they say we need to wait for a police report. And why did they do this? Because in many towns in Connecticut, it can take two, three weeks, a month to get a police report done. In some cases, even longer than that. So what they're doing is banking upon that delay and they're trying to point to it. Another thing that they may say is, well, you know, we need a statement from our insured. We need, um, that, that's a common one. We can't find our insured uh, to get a statement. And again, they know that they're giving you that reason. Now it may be true, it may not be true. Question how hard they're actually looking to get a hold of their insured uh, when it comes to an accident like this. But what they're looking to do is, is to hurt you. You were hurt in the accident and now the insurance company is gonna hurt you some more. They're gonna hurt you because they know you've got, you need transportation to get to a job. They're gonna hurt you because you may have to ask your friends for a ride or you may have to get a ride share vehicle, an Uber or a Lyft to work, and that can be very expensive. And maybe you don't want to burden your friends. Maybe you don't have any other way to get to work at all to pay your bills. And most people, you know, you know, most people in Connecticut live paycheck to paycheck. So if you're not getting that paycheck, boy, that's going to hurt. That's going to set you behind. Most people have very little vacation time or paid time off in Connecticut. So if, if you know you don't have that to bank on, if you're lucky enough to have it, you know you don't. First of all, if you have it, you don't want to. You want to use your vacation time to uh, you know go go to go to the mountains and go hiking or go to the go to the Connecticut shore and enjoy enjoy some time. You don't want to spend it at home in pain dealing with insurance companies, and they know this and they know that they can extract a lot of pain from you and they, they can apply pain, they can apply pressure to you. And why do they do this? Because they want you to give up. They don't want you to pursue an injury claim, which they know could be significantly more costly to them than a property damage claim. It doesn't cost all that much to fix a fender or, or repair some of these vehicles if you're dealing with chronic neck pain or whiplash or pain in your back or shoulder and lost wages. So they know they can inflict a lot of harm and 
they're trying to wear you down. What they're trying to say is, look, you know, you don't, you shouldn't fight us. You're, you know, if you fight us, you're going to lose. It's going to hurt. They're trying to give you, they're trying to train you to be helpless after a car accident. And they make this point. We deal with this all the time. And I'm going to give you six things that you can do to fight back, to change the equation, to take ownership of this and put pressure right back on these insurance companies. So you got to watch all the way through to the end because it's not like you can take thing number three or thing number two. It's really a six step process that's going to give you, I think, the best chance at getting the insurance company to do exactly what they should have done all along, which is to get you in a rental car, to fix your car so you can get on with your life, so you can get your medical treatment. And let me talk about that for a second. That's another thing. They don't want you to have easy access to medical treatment. Why? Because in any single case, what they'll say when it comes down to it, they'll say it in front of a jury, they'll say it to a judge, is, you know, uh, this person couldn't be that hurt because they didn't seek treatment for three weeks, or they only went to one urgent care over the course of the first month. They can't be that hurt. If they were really, really hurt, they'd go to the doctor more. And you, you know, it, they're not what they're not going to say because it's not admi or it's not admissible. Is I well, I couldn't go because they were delaying my property property damage claim and I didn't have a car. They're just going to hammer that over and over and over. They want this, so this is this is a game to them to make money to profit off of your pain. So be, just be aware of what you're what it is you're dealing with and know it's not any mistake. It's not like you have some bad adjuster. This is a plan. This is something we see from every single insurance company, all right? Now, the number one thing is maybe something you don't expect. Ask if you can record the call. And now, depending upon what state you're in, some parties it's one party consent, some parties it's two party consent, but always ask if you can record the call because insurance companies know this. When you call them, you're going to get a message before you get on with any insurance company representative that says, this call is being recorded for quality uh, and assurance purposes. I, I hear that uh, you know, seven, eight times a day, every single day uh, of my professional life. They record all of these calls. Well, turn the table on them. Tell them that you're not uh, you're not just going to go along with what they say. They've got to respect you and say, you know, can I record this call? Okay. It's going to make them a little uncomfortable, but it's also going to send a message and it's also going to serve a purpose, which we're going to get to in point number four, but ask them, can I record this call? Many phones, um, you know, there's apps to record calls or it may be built into the app that you're using. I'm not going to go into the technical details, but go to your Apple or Android app store, look for, look for apps and, but make sure, you know, to ask them initially, because I want you to send that message to them that you mean business. Point number two is to ask if their insured gave a statement. Let me repeat that. Ask them, ask the insurance company if they're insured, the person who hit you, the person who caused your car accident, gave them a recorded statement. Now, insurance companies, if, you're, if you've made it this far, an insurance company has probably asked you for a recorded statement. Now, you do not have to give them a recorded statement if they are not your insurance company. And they do this for one reason and one reason only, because they want to use it against you at a later date in a deposition or at a trial or in a mediation. They really want to use that statement against you. So they ask you, and instead of just saying, no, say, can I, can I have a copy of your insured statement? Um, and this is going to force them to one, disclose whether or not that they, their insured gave a statement, 
Two, it's going to put them back on the defensive. It's going to put that adjuster back on the defensive. I guarantee that 99.999% of people who go through this process never, never ask that question. And the insurance adjuster is going to act like you're from Mars, but really they're going to be a little bit scared of you because they're going to know that you know your rights in this respect. So definitely ask them if they're insured, gave a statement, and then ask for a copy of that statement, okay? And make a note of it. Ideally, this call is being recorded. Did they give a statement? At, and if they say no, you know, can you say, can you give me what was in this statement? Can you give me a summary of what was in this statement? Again, ideally, this call is being recorded. Insurance companies also transcribe these statements. Now, we see these later in depositions and discovery. We can get access to them, but they transcribe these statements. Ask them for a transcription of what they're insured says because what you're going to do is you're going to expose the lie that they're telling which is that they need to investigate because many people they call their insurance companies and they say you know i i wasn't paying attention i've heard a, I, you know i've heard a lot of these calls i i wasn't paying attention and i was on my phone and i looked away and you know i just rear-ended the guy in front of me a lot of times those are the statements and those aren't helpful to the insurance company. Also ask when their insured gave that statement. Because again, you're, you're, you're trying to turn the tables on these insurance companies in a big, big way by showing them that you know your stuff. It's the only thing that they're going to respect. Number three is send pictures. Pictures don't lie. They may not tell the whole story, but you know, if somebody is, you know, say, rear-ended or, or, you know, somebody crosses the center line and hits you head on, you know, send the pictures that prove. And also, also, because what you're trying to do by sending them those pictures is to pepper the file and to say, you know, you're not being truthful here, insurance company. You're not doing what you should do, which is to get me in a rental car, to get my car fixed, and that's not okay. And also, ask the insurance company for the pictures that they have. Say, can you show me the pictures? Do you have pictures? When were these pictures given to you? Because this is gonna, this is really gonna play in, um, you know, in, in the next parts four, five, and six that I'm gonna talk about in this video. But ask them for the pictures because if they're denying liability when the pictures clearly show it, when the their insured is admitting it and they're saying, well, we need to wait on a police report, you're calling their bluff by fighting back and really taking the heat to them. Okay, number four is document everything. Everything that they tell you, they may not want the calls to be recorded, but write down notes, write down the time of the call, write down who you spoke with, write down what they said, be as accurate as possible and create a, a document, um, something that you're okay with sharing eventually, but you're going to want to create that document in real time because that document can be admissible. Uh, because it is recorded and reported in, in, in real time and that's going to and it's also just useful because sometimes in a case you may forget what date or who you talked to uh, two three years down the road or what they said so make careful notes of any conversation get the name of the adjuster the time of the call um, what was said um, what steps that they said that they were going to take and when they said that they were going to take them because you need the goods for what I'm going to talk about in steps five and six. Okay. Maybe by this point, you know, steps one through four have worked for you. Great. The insurance company has given you a, uh, you know, fair value for your car. The insurance company has got you a rental car. You're able to get treatment. That's fantastic. Number five is to, you know, threaten, say, look, if you don't do this, I'm going to report you to the insurance commissioner. And why the insurance commissioner? Well, it, it, bringing a lawsuit isn't going to immediately remedy your problem because lawsuits can take years, months, 
Um, it can take a lot of time. It may not be cost effective to bring a, a, immediately, but a complaint to the state insurance commissioner can be can put some added pressure on them because these insurance companies, in order to write insurance, have to play fair. They have to pay claims when they're supposed to pay them. And this is where the recorded phone calls, the pictures, the notes you have taken, when you write that complaint or when you, you, you write that complaint to the insurance commissioner, you're gonna say, you know, I called them on this day. I spoke with this person. This is what they said. This was the reason that they gave. I provided them with this. I did this. Now, insurance companies know a lot of people, even if they get to this point, aren't going to have done this. And they're going to look to dismiss those claims so easily because there's no evidence. People say, well, you know, essentially the complaint says, well, they didn't get me in a rental car fast enough. And it's easy enough for the insurance department to just brush that aside. But if you have the goods, you have the names, you have the dates, you have recorded phone calls, you have the pictures, they're going to look really, really foolish in denying those claims. So we'll post a link uh, below to where you can file a complaint with the insurance commissioner. Again, you know, you're going to want to tell the insurance company first that you're going to do this if they don't do it. Because if you just do it, you may lose some leverage uh, against them because what you really want is not a complaint with the insurance commissioner. You want a rental car, you want your car back. So definitely, you know, threaten and be prepared to go through with it, but suggest to them that you will make a, a complaint to the insurance commissioner. Now, number six, if you're dealing with this on your own, these insurance adjusters, they know this because they've gone to seminars on it. Um, they have manuals on it. They're scared of it. They're internal risk managers. They talk to them about exactly these things. And in Connecticut, you have two specific acts that apply. One is called the Connecticut Unfair Insurance Practices Act, or CUIPA for short. So C-U-I-P-A, Connecticut Unfair Insurance Practices Act. You can Google that, pull up the specific statutes. You don't even need it. If you can show the adjuster that you know what the Connecticut Unfair Insurance Practices Act is, that's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna scare them a little bit because they know you know what you're doing and they know that you know that you have remedies and that you're not just going to take what it is that they're, that they're giving. The other statutory, uh, uh, act that really Connecticut has is the Connecticut Unfair Trade Practices Act, or CUTPA. Um, you know, people who make these things aren't, aren't very uh, original in, in how they name them, but CUTPA is a powerful statute that is a consumer rights statute. And what CUTPA really practices, it, CUTPA, CUTPA really punishes is an act uh, that an insurance or that any business repeats to customers and causes harm. And you can bet, you're going through this. I, I talk to thousands of people um, who have been through these situations. I see it day in and day out. This is not some random act. This is not some, you know, your situation is not unique. They do this over and over and over and over again. They delay paying claims because they hold on to their money longer. That allows them to earn interest on that money. And you could say, well, you know, in any one case, it's not very big, right? Maybe it's an extra three weeks of hanging on to $20,000 or $30,000, all of which is very small to these insurance companies. But you start doing it over thousands and thousands of claims over years. And you were talking hundreds of millions of dollars more in just this simple practice that they're earning on interest day in and day out. And you can say, you know, this wasn't just me under Kappa. You're doing this to other people. And it's almost like a mini class action. And again, your goal is not to bring a Kappa action for failure to pay for your rental car properly or failure to, uh, you know, fix your car in, in a timely manner and get you, get you the help. You, that's, you know, that, your goal is to get back on with your life. Talk to many people, that is what they want. So if you suggest to the insurance company, look, I will consider, I will consider bringing a, 
a, a, a Connecticut Unfair Insurance Practices Act claim against you. I will consider naming you in a Connecticut Unfair Trade Practices Act. You know, I'll name the insurance company, I'll name the adjuster as defendants, and I'll, you know, I'm prepared to go through with this because I know that it's wrong. And I know if I don't stand up, you're going to keep doing it to other people. So those are the real six steps that I can give you to really try to turn the tables, to try to get you in a rental car as fast as possible, to try to get the insurance company to do what they should have done all along, what they've taken money to do, what they've made money doing, which is that they need to, they took money for the premiums, they need to pay the claims, and they need to do so in a fair and expeditious manner. Now, if you have any questions, I can't cover everything in uh, a short video like this. If you have any questions or you're going through this situation, don't hesitate to give me a call. 860-471-8333. Me or a member of my team, we're here 24 seven, ready to assist you. We've got form letters on our side. Our team is trained in handling these uh, uh, situations because a lot of times people aren't, uh, you know, it's hard to stand up for yourself. A lot of people out there, it's easy for them to stand up for a friend, a child, or a parent, but it's hard sometimes to stand up uh, for, uh, for ourselves, especially when you're dealing with, you know, multi-billion dollar insurance companies who have this specific process down to a science to inflict pain on you. Again, 24-7, Connecticut Trial Firm, 860-471-8333.